This is the giant burrowing cockroach. It's one of the largest cockroaches in the world. If you were to hold it, it would fill the palm of your hand. Despite its appearance, it isn't a pest. In fact, it's one of the most useful insects in the forest. Australians call it the litter bug because it cleans up the forest floor, eating leaves and detritus. This one is a female. She's pregnant and she's digging a tunnel in order to create a safe place where she can produce her young. Her tunnel is a meter deep, the equivalent of you or me digging down more than 20 meters. And here she gives birth. Having done so, most insects would leave and their young would be left to fend for themselves. But not her. She will care for her young for months, keeping them moist and warm under her shell. Occasionally, she'll return to the surface to collect eucalyptus leaves for them to eat. This cockroach will live for eight years or more. During that time, she will produce around 150 young. And by caring for them for the first six months of their lives, she ensures that every one of them gets the best possible start. It's the start of the day. And in the giraffe house, a new baby is on its way. Orla is in labour. So, let's have a look. The calf appears to be coming out in the right order. Head and front legs first. She's doing fantastic. The front hooves coming out first, and that's fine. You really can see the draft contracting, and she's really trying to, like, push. Giraffe calves are huge. They're 10% of the size of their mother at birth. It's a risky birth because they're so big. It weighs ju just as much as me when they're born. Over five feet tall. And yeah, I feel for her because that's a big baby. I wouldn't want to be giving birth to a 60 kilo calf. you'll see the calf sort of hanging partially out and it looks like it's, it's not moving or if it's not breathing. It is a nerve-wracking few seconds. Is it alive? The two-metre fall is designed to break the umbilical cord and to encourage the calf to breathe. We were waiting for him to take his first breath, and it, yeah, I was like, oh, and then, thank God, he did. <laughs> good. Come on, little one. We can see a scene shot in Washington Zoo where a gorilla mother delivers her baby on her own. The nurses can only encourage her. Girl can lay out. Yay, oh, we got a baby. Oh my goodness. Good we have got a baby. Good girl, Miss Kalea. The mother immediately shows signs of affection for her baby. This bond is essential for its survival. A bond that Sheila will have to create too. 
After a wait of 13 months, Nadine is finally going into labour. But she appears to be struggling. Every single birth is different, so it could happen that the foal is in the wrong position. It could be that the foal is too big, so it can't come out properly. And mum will be pushing and pushing and nothing will happen. It could be that it's a stillborn. It's all a jeopardy. Her two and a half year old daughter, Merida, is staying close. There's not a lot I can do. I can see she's uncomfortable. If you could just tell them, you know, it's going to be all right, you know, just take it easy. I think literally she'd kick me out if I started touching her and, like, helping her. Half an hour later, Nadine's foal finally makes its appearance. But the keepers are concerned that Nadine hasn't stood up. Nadine doesn't look very... I don't know if it's completely out, but Nadine is flat out on the yard. And she's hardly, like, moving. Merida hasn't left her mum's side. Dad, Mac, can only watch on from his neighbouring field. Minutes later, Nadine finally struggles to her feet and encourages her newborn to do the same. So far, Dorothée has only helped with one rhino delivery. It marks a crucial moment for her. Bien, ma fille, come. Come here, come. Super, ça, good job, good. To monitor the pregnancy, she regularly performs blood tests. Oui, voilà, Bess, come here, come. C'est bien, ma louloute, c'est bien. Salut, ma belle. Je place un petit garrot au niveau de l'oreille. Super. C'est bien, ma fille. Pour faire gonfler ses veines, on fait cette prise de sang à peu près tous les mois, euh, de façon à pouvoir suivre son taux de progestérone. Progestérone, c'est un peu l'hormone de la gestation. Et donc, euh, elle va augmenter durant la gestation. Et cette hormone, ce dosage, va aussi nous indiquer le moment de la mise bas. If everything goes to plan, this is what Dorothée hopes to see with Beth. After a 16-month gestation period, it will take only a few seconds for Beth to give birth to the baby, which already weighs about 40 kilos. In a natural environment, the newborn has to stand up as soon as possible to escape predators. Here, the mother uses her horn to prompt him. <laughs> 